Welcome to Andrew's Workshop Projects. This one is part 16. The Stuart Models S50 steam engine is now completed and runs quite well. Maybe the valve timing can be improved as well as some of the clearances. But as usual I'm just being picky. It runs very well and it's a credit to the builder. Over now to the live audio from the workshop. It took about six weeks to build it and um, made the crank out of stainless steel. Uh, I've done some kind of patterning on these. Um, I'm quite pleased with it. It's uh, it's turned out quite nice. I've also put uh, um, hogany cladding on there and just two bands. Looks quite nice. And I don't really like making the uh, the plates that they supply. What do you think, Keith? I think it's nice. It runs well. I think they need machining a bit thinner, they're a bit too lumpy. I see where you're coming from, making it match the bottom, but it's a little bit, dare I say it, over scale. If that was thinner where it was supposed to be, uh, had you have used the standard metal to mill the fancy bits and it would have been alright, but it's a bit thick. But that's just me being picky. But the timing was just a tiny bit retarded at each end, but the big problem is at each end of the stroke there's a tiny little bit of tightness it starts to tighten up from there and I really don't know why but it needs running in let's put some air into it and give it a test as you can see this runs very sweetly it needs running at this speed for a while so everything is bedded in no knocking, no rattling nothing's fallen off it yet things are looking up each engine that you build, you're getting better at it. That's life in general, yeah, I think. Yeah. I mean, have a look at the flywheel. Look at the concentricity of the flywheel. Let me just zoom in. That is a joy to behold because some engineers will bore the centre of the flywheel and they're only really interested in having the, the shaft match the outer edge, which does make sense if you're going to drive things off it. But Andrew's taking great pains to get the inside diameter right as well and the flywheel is good and it's machined the boss and I always machine the bosses in the centre uh, it's, a, it's quite a work of art as that a nice little engine not too powerful but they are really useful for driving dynamos What I'm doing at the moment is adjusting the timing. That's better. Let's see how slow it will go. That's just before top dead centre. It's about the same at both ends, isn't it? Having said that, at which point does it become obsessive? Um, I freely admit I'm not OCD but I'm very obsessive when it comes to setting timing because I like to get things right. You know when you did your S50 plant you trimmed a little bit off the valve and that could be the case that you just trim a little yeah, bit off the valve. Little bit. Yeah. The problem with the uh, one on the plant was when I trimmed the end of the uh, slide valve uh, it was uncovering both ports minutely mm. when it sat in the middle, it wasn't covering both ports sometimes there are discrepancies, you have to work around them I've worked on many S50s some in good condition, some in bad condition and I've put some of them from bad condition into good condition and the yellow one that uh, belongs to my friend James Evans you can blow that over with a compressed air line shoved in your mouth, which is quite good. It's very free running. This will be a lot better once it's running. Having a look at this, there's something fundamentally wrong with it. Generally speaking, valve forks have a flange at each side and not on the top. To illustrate this, if you look at the big end, there's a flange there and a flange there but there isn't a flange at this side and there isn't one at the other side because if you did it that way it would be really big and bulky 
and so that's what we have this very delicate union for the valve fork would be great if it was flat on the top and flat on the bottom and, and only flanged at, at the sides and the same with that it doesn't want a big clumsy flange on the top again it's the scale of things uh, we don't have the action man in the shot I think you've done very well with this one you asked me about marks out of 10 I would say 7 to 8 out of 10 on this one there are one or two slight anomalies that puzzle me particularly with the quality of machinery you got and the experience there is a bit of play on the crosshead you can see the crosshead moves up and down at that point it doesn't move up and down at that point no which means that that spacer is less than that spacer hmm. or that isn't flat yeah it's it's a very minor point but that would be something that i, I yeah. would approach having said all that listen to it it doesn't rattle it's going extremely fast and nothing's dropped off it so yeah i would say maybe being kind but i don't want to see a grown man cry i would say eight out of ten on this one i'll take that you would have to look at them. I'm happy with some of the machining I've done on it, particularly the fact that it was stainless steel on the big ends. Um, taking note of your comments about finishing and paintwork. You've not mentioned the paintwork, so that must be a good thing. Well, the paintwork's fine. It's brush painted. It's the way I like it. The full size engines were brush painted. Um, Unlike lathes, if you look at the lathe, it's generally skimmed in filler, rubbed down and then painted, spray painted. With steam engines, a lot of the time, particularly back in the day, many years ago, they just painted it with a brush. With the timing set now to where I would say it's as good as it's going to get, I cannot fault that. <laughs> Listen to the beat. This is a good way of doing it. Put your hand underneath it. To finish off speaking about this S50, Andrew's even gone to the trouble of machining off the casting bolt heads and he's fitted proper bolt heads. They don't do anything, but they look a lot better than the original cast-in ones. Very nice, Andrew. It's worth taking a look at Andrew's YouTube channel. The address is on screen. And at the moment, he's quite busy machining the sole plate of a Stuart triple expansion engine. I quite enjoy these informal chats in the workshop over a cup of tea, watching an engine struggling to work. Sorry, Andrew, I didn't mean that. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.